What we have here is the Florida cotton mill. Florida cotton mills are probably the third most dangerous snake down here. Most bites from this snake are not fatal, but they do cause a lot of pain and they can cause a lot of tissue damage. The venom from this snake is much like that of the diamondback as a very potent hemotoxin. Now cotton mills are usually found near water. The cotton mouth is very dark, has banding, and it's light underneath the belly with dark brown blotches. To identify the cotton mouth, most of us will look at the side of the head at that horizontal stripe. That horizontal stripe is outlined in a lighter shade of color. Pretty visible from a good distance. We don't need to get close to them in order to identify them. But a lot of times it's difficult to tell a water snake from a cotton mouth. So what most people should do is if you see a snake near water, on land, leave both of them alone. Now we're going to extract some venom from the cotton mouth. This is the venom of the cotton mouth, very similar to the venom of the diamondback rattlesnake. The venom of this snake happens to be the same color as the diamondback uh, venom. Uh, it is also a hemotoxin causing tissue damage and hemorrhaging when bitten by these snakes. But usually the venom of the cotton mouth is not quite as fatal as that of the diamondback. Cotton mouths are ambush predators on land. They'll lay in wait camouflaged in their environment. When small mammals come by, or even a frog, the snake will reach out and grab himself a meal. The primary food for a cotton mouth is fish, frogs, baby alligators, and possibly other snakes.
When these snakes swim through the water, they normally swim on the surface of the water. They undulate the body from side to side to train to propel them across the surface of the water. Most water snakes, which actually simulate and look like cotton mouths, are often mistaken for the cotton mouth itself. In the picture below, we see the water snake is almost completely submerged beneath the water. As you can see in the picture above, the cottonmouth swims with two-thirds of the body exposed above the surface of the water. In the old days, the U.S. government would send soldiers to drive the Indians out of the swamp. Native Americans had many strategies to protect themselves by utilizing venomous snakes. They would actually hang them from trees by leather straps or place them in alligator dens that were below the ground. When soldiers would actually fall through the surface of the ground, they would be bitten by these snakes inside the alligator dens. As they traveled through the swamps where these snakes were heavy, they would also wind up being bit for improper footwear. The Indians would protect themselves by wrapping palm thatch around their legs as they traveled through these areas and the snakes were unable to bite through these palm thatches.